Our next talk is going to be about automated, automatic numerical bifurcation analysis with applications to neurosciences using bifurcation kit, uh, which is a super powerful package that Roman has developed for doing bifurcation analysis of ODs and more importantly, I think PDs. So. Uh, well, thank you Samuel for the nice introduction. Uh, I would like to start by saying that's a real pleasure to, to be talking uh, uh, at the Julia meeting, uh, uh, in a SIAM meeting. Um, and so, as uh, Samuel said, I'm, I'm going to talk about um, uh, a package I developed as part of my research. I'm a researcher at INRIA, in the south of France, working on uh, mathematical neurosciences. And uh, I do two kinds of things. I, I, I um, do models of, um, of synapse and synaptic plasticity. That's where I study uh, jump processes and and I also study um, neural networks from the point of view of mathematics, so solving PDs. And so that's why I developed um, bifurcation kit uh, uh, .gl. Um, and so this talk will be about presenting this package with one application to uh, uh, neuroscience, very recent one. Um, and so the goal will be to present the automatic tooling that is part of um, uh, the library. And um, one example, uh, where the library is used at its fullest. So maybe you know the limit. Um, and also based on the um, issued open uh, issues opened on the, on the package, I decided to talk about basically um, uh, two main algorithms um, so that the, the pro and cons of each, uh, of each algorithm um, is hopefully clear. Okay. So what is it? Well, bifurcation case is a library for numerical bifurcation analysis of dimensional equations. So basically solving fx equals zero. Um, so you, it, it's a registered package, so it's very easy to install. So just type uh, add bifurcation kit uh, in a package manager. And it comes with a lot of um, tutorials to show you how to use it uh, and also docs. Um, I think it would be, it was nice to show you a, a quick example about how it can be used. So let's say you, um, um, I hope you can see my mouse. Um, uh, you, you load the packet uh, also uh, because uh, we want to plot. Uh, and so let's say you want to compute the, 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 the zeros of this cubic. So we just define a function. We say we're going to compute it for parameter B and one. Okay. And then we pass the vector field f, a rough initial guess, minus two, it's gonna be around here, for parameter uh, minus three. And we wanna print the solution, so the first component, so we pass this function, we compute the branch, br, and we plot it with a plot recipe, so we analyze the branch, okay? So that's basically a, a simple example of how it works. So why um, another library? I mean, there are many very good uh, uh, libraries, especially for OG. Uh, uh, just to mention uh, Auto, Zero Set P, uh, MatCont, XPPO, PDS Tool, Coco, and Bifurcations by uh, Takafumi and Julia. They are amazing tools. Um, computing periodic orbits, homo clinic orbits, all that. Um, but if you go now um, to uh, the PD side, uh, I would dare to say <laughs> maybe people will be not be very happy, but there's only one software. It's a math. It's very comprehensive. It does automatic brain switching, computation of periodic orbits, their verification, and so on and so forth. And so um, uh, you also have um, deflated continuation, which is done in the package uh, DevCont by uh, Patrick Fay, which is a, a Python package. So the reason is, I want to. Uh, why do I I I I, I made this uh, library? It's because uh, I want to implement new algorithms for large edge systems. I want to take advantage of unique Julia ecosystem. Differential equations, .gl, automatic differential equation, GPU. I want to write generic code for CPU and GPU. I want to be able to tune the linear solver, iterative linear solver, uh, eigen solver, and so on and so forth. So the, the ultimate goal is to have automatic, fully automatic algorithm for memory limited devices, or uh, basically GPUs. So I shall now focus only on stationary solutions because um, otherwise it would be too long. So I'll skip the part on uh, periodic orbits, but to the website and you would see that there's tons example uh, about this. Let's, so now I'm gonna present the two main algorithms for um, computing bifurcation diagrams or um, uh, of stationary solutions. So let me equation x comma p equals zero. F is n dimensional, 
the unknown x is n dimensional p is a scalar so it's basically computing um, sub manifold of dimension one and so what we want to do actually what compute is curves of solution xs comma p of s where s is can be the arc length for example and we want this curve to pass through a non-solution x0 okay at x0 p0 the first algorithm is called deflated continuation it will give you basically all solution to e okay it's a smart brute force based on this a uh, very nice technique introduced by Patrick Farrell, which is deflated continuation. In a nutshell, if you know the roots or some roots, uh, x, x1, x2, xn of g, you can just form this uh, new functional g divided by the product of the norm, and you apply Newton to this new functional with some uh, numerical uh, tricks to make it uh, stable. And it works, I mean, usually it gives you new solution. Okay, so it's a deceptively simple algorithm that works very well actually in practice. And so now you can use it. Let's say you want to find all solution for P equal P zero using this iteratively. And then you use these solutions as guesses for let's say P one equal P zero plus DS. Okay, and so you using a deflated Newton, you compute the, the, the new solutions and then you apply another deflated Newton, the last one to find possibly another solution. Okay, and you iterate. So that's the first algorithm. The second algorithm is pseudo arc length continuation. So I call it PALC. It gives you access only to the connected component of X0, P0, okay? Uh, but so basically the idea is uh, you add a constraint, basically a linear, a, a linear constraint N of XP uh, here. And what you do is you compute the tan using this uh, um, constraint, you compute the tangent of the curve gamma at let's say X0. Then you compute a predictor, which is basically the non-solution plus a little bit of the tangent you correct it with Newton and you iterate. Okay, that gives you a, a, a curve of solution. So the pro and cons, basically the pro, well, the, the, the pro of deflated continuation is gives you a lot of solutions. Uh, but it's memory intensive, many solutions. Um, it's difficult to paralyze. Um, and also you lose a lot of time uh, on, uh, on diverged Newton, okay, on Newton that does not converge. And you say, okay, I go back to, uh, I go to another solution. So it's a loss of time. And pseudo arc length, basically, it doesn't give you all solution, but it's fast and uh, you don't need that memory. Good example here, you can see uh, on the carrier problem, it's a singular perturbation problem. You can find it on the, on the tutorials. On the left, you have the result by the deflated continuation uh, uh, method. You can see that you have lots of solution. For example, the red is not is disconnected to the other. Many of the of the uh, solutions are disconnected. Uh, and if you do so you do, uh, the, the PALC method, you start at uh, epsilon is 0 0.7. You only get one curve, the blue one, and a bifurcation point is detected at let's say 0 0.45. Okay. We can branch. We're gonna see how to do that. We can branch from this point and find the, 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 the emerging branches, which would be basically the green one. So at best, using PALC and automatic branching, we can get on, the, on this graph, the blue, the blue graph and the green graph, okay? So there's a trade-off between memory, speed, uh, what you want to do, okay. So we shall now focus on PALC. Uh, so the right, the, 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 the pseudo arc length continuation. And we, I'm going to present uh, how we can use it, uh, nevertheless, to do automatic bifurcation diagram, okay, to compute the largest, um, let's say, connected components. And so to do that, I have to show you, to explain you to, how to do automatic branch switching at a bifurcation point. So a bifurcation point, very loosely speaking, is a point at which the, the kernel of the Jacobian is not zero. And so solution may, may emerge um, at bifurcation points. Once we know, once we have located ones, for example, using bi bisection, uh, like on this re uh, green curve, you have like a, a bifurcation here, okay? Once we have this bifurcation point, we can compute a, a, an equivalent equation, which is called the reduced equation with no approximation. And this reduced equation is d-dimensional, dimension of the, of the kernel. So it's a tremendous prediction in the number of unknowns, okay? And what we do in bifurcation kit.gl is we compute a 3J uh, approximation of phi, and then we solve the resulting polynomials using a, a low dimensional um, uh, deflated, uh, deflated Newton. <clears throat> and, and then we use those solutions as guesses for 
the, the, the original equation, like uh, the, the large dimensional one. Okay, and this works relatively well. I mean, uh, on the right side, you can see that I use this um, scheme to compute the eight branches coming out from the bifurcation one. Usually automatic branch switching works in 2D when you have like a kernel which is 2D, 3D, but when it's, when it's um, large dimensional with symmetries, it's state of the art. And I know only the work of Wouters, but it's not really open source yet. And so then once you have this device, automatic branch switching, you can, you can compute branches, compute bifurcation point and iteratively ap apply branch switching and you get then a bifurcation diagram, okay? And so um, if I apply this to this uh, uh, 2D bratu gelfand problem, which is written here, you can recognize the part of the diagram I was uh, uh, shown on the last slide. You get, you, you press a button, you, you, you enter the vector field, you press a button, and I don't know, like five minutes later, you obtain these 84 branches like this. It's very powerful, and at, some at, at the same time, it's quite scary, okay? Because you have a lot of solutions. Um, works well, you can see you can, uh, in package kit, you can, for example, say the level of iteration you want, you can put uh, more detail on some part. Let's say you want to, to, to iterate more in this part, you can do it because it's stored as a, as a, as a binary, tr as a tree, okay? So it's very convenient to use. You can put the, the computing power where you want. Okay, so now the second example I want to show you is basically um, um, an example wo working on GPU. The un it's entirely working on GPU, okay? Uh, so it's a model of, uh, it's called neural field equations, the model of visual hallucinations. Um, you can find it very easily on the web. And so the, the goal is to, in this case, solve solutions, stationary solution of this uh, nonlinear integral equation, which is 3D. And if you do it on a GPU, I mean, if you, it's crazy not to do it on the GPU, it's so fast. So we do it on a GPU. Uh, there are many issues. The first one is you have a lot of symmetries. And so the automatic branch switching I described is gonna be uh, necessary, not easy. And also the problem is you cannot save, uh, keep in memory uh, all the eigen elements information. Okay, so basically we have to recompute it on the fly, otherwise you don't have a... So that's where bifurcation kit is used at it's fullest, right? Because um, I disengage the automatic uh, bifurcation diagram. And so the thing runs entirely on a, on a V100 uh, Tesla card using CUDA.gl, iterative solvers from the Krylov kit, bifurcation point allocating with bisections algorithm, the radius equation and automatic branch switching is done on the fly uh, for 10 million unknown. And it's one of the few bifurcation diagram I know done on the GPU. So the result is uh, uh, here. And you can see that um, in this case, I have like, I think it's like an eight dimensional um, bifurcation point here. This one is a four dimensional and you can compute, you can see all the bifurcation points uh, are dots from which basically other branches will emerge with new bifurcation points. On this one. Okay, um, I'll take a few seconds to highlight some of the feature I did not describe. So there's a very handy, a use of the algorithm using iterators. So you can just customize uh, the PALC basically uh, to your taste. Uh, there's also a CODIM1 continu continuation of fold point and hop bifurcation points. You can do, I described branch switching at uh, equilibria, but you can do the same at, um, at bifurcation point, sorry. You can do the same at uh, hop bifurcation point where you compute pair decor bits using uh, two different, uh, three different methods, uh, finite, difference, finite differences or uh, parallel point carré and uh, uh, standard uh, uh, shooting methods, which are based on the uh, differential equation of the GL. Uh, and then you can compute, uh, uh, detect bifurcation, emac sacker pair doubling and so on and so forth um, for all this. So this is not, what in, in bold is what I, I did not describe basically. So in, to conclude, um, it's a, I think it's a highly tunable tool uh, for ODE and beyond, like non-local models, I just present one. Uh, and it works on uh, CPU and GPU. I'd like to make it work on a uh, cluster. Uh, it has many unique features like automatic branch switching uh, and bifurcation diagram. It works on GPU. You have shooting, trapeze methods, all in large dimensions. Not, I mean, you, you cannot find, you, you, don't, you won't find many uh, software with all, with all these features. And then there's another interfaces to the PDE world. So for example, to AppRoxFun, 
which is really nice uh, to grid up also, uh, which is, uh, the, 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 the interface is not complete yet, and to Fourier flows. And so all of these guys, uh, all these uh, examples are in the tutorials. And I will just mention um, uh, the future. So very, um, I mean, uh, in the near future, there will be event detection. So you can, a longer branch detect, well, I don't know, crossing of an event. And from this, all coding two detection will be, uh, will be done, Bogdanov Takens, uh, Botin, and that will work for matrix free GPU. I want to do also uh, to re rebirth um, uh, the, uh, the interface with differential equation, the GL. I wrote it a long time ago, but I, I think now it's broken. Uh, and I would like to also to give a shot to uh, uh, an interface with a uh, Trixi, the GA, which is a very nice PD software with a high, uh, adaptive meshing uh, uh, refinement. And uh, for later, there will be also improvement to deflated continuation. This is in test, adaptive method for periodic orbits continu uh, continu computation. Uh, probably a new interface uh, inspired by the one from uh, uh, the one of uh, differential equations, the GA. And then uh, probably a new organization because um, uh, it's difficult to keep track of um, the um, uh, parameters that works for ODE, DD, PD, all in a single software. And with this, I will uh, thank you for your attention.